Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I finally have that epic gaming battle between the Ryzen 7 2700X and Core i7-8700K, and this has been one that many of you have been requesting. I'm sure at this point, neither CPU really needs an introduction. Both are flagship mainstream desktop parts that come at a similar asking price, but I will discuss the value aspect of this comparison towards the end of the video. Uh, in a moment, we will talk about the test system setup and all the test conditions, but before that, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Corsair. For the most mesmerizing RGB memory on the market, check out Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro Series. Using carefully screened ICs, Corsair ensures maximum performance with overclocks exceeding DDR4 4600 speeds. So, if you want to take your gaming system's performance and looks to the next level, be sure to check out Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro Series. Link is in the video description. Okay, so the Core i7-8700K rig features the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 with 16GB of DDR4-3400 Samsung BDI memory using the stilts timings. The CPU has been overclocked to 5GHz and cooling at that frequency is the Corsair Hydro Series H100i V2 inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. Then for the Ryzen 7 2700X rig, we have the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 Samsung BDI memory, again using the stilts timings. The 2700X has been overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz, and this time we're using the Corsair Hydro H150i Pro inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. For testing, we have 35 games on the menu, and each game has been tested at 720p, 1080p, and 1440p using the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. I'm once again going with our new format for this video, since pretty much everyone seemed to prefer it in the previous video when I compared the RX 580 and GTX 1060, and this means I'll be discussing eight of the more interesting titles and then jumping to the performance breakdown for all 35 games tested. For those of you who want to examine all the results more closely, there will be a link to a post on our Patreon account with all the details. Having said all that, let's get to the results. First up, we have the Battlefield 1 results to discuss, and here we see a fairly even fight, though at times it is advantage Intel. At the low 720p resolution, the 8700K was up to 12% faster as the Ryzen CPU seemed to cap out at just 116 FPS for the 1% low result. Moving to 1080p, we find similar margins for the frame time performance. Here, Intel was 11% faster. That said, it was interesting to see the 2700X close up on the 8700K for the average frame rate. Typically, it's the average frame rate where Intel does seem to pull away. Then finally, at 1440p, we're primarily GPU bound here, even with a GTX 1080 Ti, and here the 8700K and 2700X deliver an identical experience. Moving on to Far Cry 5, and here we see the 8700K is up to 15% faster at 720p, though just 8% faster for the frame time result, and it's the exact same story at 1080p. Then, as we increase the resolution to 1440p, the 8700K is now up to just 6% faster, and then just 2% when comparing the frame time performance. Needless to say, at 4K you'd be completely GPU limited, so both CPUs would deliver the exact same result. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here the 8700K was 12% faster at 720p for the 1% low result, and 9% faster for the average frame rate. The margin erodes away almost completely at 1080p. Here the Core i7 processor was just 5% faster. Then at 1440p, we see identical performance with both CPUs, enabling extreme performance. Included due to popular demand is Fortnite, and here we find the 8700K enjoying a 10 to 14% performance advantage at 720p. The Intel CPU remains 14% faster for the frame time performance at 1080p, but just 4% faster for the average frame rate. Then at 1440p, the 2700X actually edges ahead. Granted, the frame time performance is identical, but it was 3% faster for the average frame rate. Here we see a massive discrepancy in the CSGO benchmark between the frame time and average frame rate performance. And this is mostly down to the fact that this benchmark is very diverse in what is seen throughout the benchmark scene. Depending on the resolution, the 8700K is between 11 and 24% faster than the 2700X when comparing the 1% low performance. However, when it comes to the average frame rate, the 8700K is between 33 
and 52% faster, which are obviously very significant margins. The only saving grace here for the Ryzen 7 CPU is the fact that it averaged over 500 FPS at all times. That's probably enough for even your most pro of pro players. I've heard that the Ryzen CPUs we're having a wreck fest with Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs in the new vehicular combat racing title, Wreckfest. Turns out, not so much, at least based on our overclocked results. Here the 8700K smashed the Ryzen 7 processor at 720p and 1080p, delivering up to 29% more performance. The damage is somewhat mitigated at 1440p thanks to a GPU bottleneck, and with well over 60 FPS at all times, it has to be said the experience was still great using either CPU. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds has never been kind to AMD hardware, it has to be said, so not surprising that we find the Core i7 processor enjoying a 17% performance advantage at 720p. That margin though is slightly reduced to 15% at 1080p, and then it is entirely eliminated at 1440p once we run into a heavy GPU bottleneck. The last game we're going to look closely at is Vermintide 2, and this title does play well with AMD hardware. That said, it plays even better with the Core i7-8700K. It has to be said that the performance was most impressive using either CPU, despite the fact that the 8700K pushed up to 26% more frames at 720p, and up to 20% more at 1080p. Once we hit 1440p though, we're limited by the GTX 1080 Ti, so performance was much the same. Okay, so based on what we've just seen in that eight game sample, it's pretty clear that the lower resolutions, the Core i7 8700K is king, but has to be said not by an overly convincing margin. Then of course, by the time that we hit the 1440p resolution, we start to run into a bit of a GPU bottleneck there, and both CPUs are able to maximize what the GTX 1080 Ti is capable of. Having said all that, let's break down the data further and compare all 35 games in one single graph. First up, we have the 720p results, and the standout here, or the outlier if you will, is CSGO, where the 8700K was 52% faster. The 8700K shouldn't be that much faster, it's overclocked just 19% higher, and it only has a very, very small IPC advantage, we're talking a few percent at most. The Ryzen 5 2600 compared well to the lower clocked Core i5 8400 in CSGO, but the faster memory and higher clock speeds of the 8700K take this to the next level. For those of you that are a bit wild that I've included this title in my 35 game bundle, you really need not stress about it. Removing CSGO changes the margin by a single percent. Without it, the 8700K is 12% faster at 720p. So, as you can see, with the GPU limits mostly removed, the 8700K clocked at 5 GHz isn't a great deal faster than the Ryzen 7 2700X. It's certainly faster, but doesn't blow the AMD processor away. Interestingly, if we look solely at the frame time performance, we find similar margins. Here, the 8700K was 12% faster on average. That said, removing Total War Saga does drop the margin down to 10%, and we can see that in 18 of the titles tested, the 8700K was only faster by up to a 10% margin. In fact, we do see a few titles where the 8700K was only able to match the 2700X, and one, being Dirt 4, where it was actually slower. Now, at 1080p, the margin starts to close up, and on average, the 8700K was just 9% faster, and in well over half the titles tested, the margin was less than 10%. The only games to show massive performance deficits include CSGO, Wreckfest, StarCraft 2, and Far Cry Primal. So avoid those titles if you want to show AMD in the best possible light. Doing so drops our game count to 31 and the margin down to just 6% on average. Here we see that when looking at the frame time performance that the Ryzen 7 2700X looks even more competitive, as here the 8700K was just 9% faster on average. The only really poor result here for AMD is Total War Saga, a recently released title that might have a few bugs that need going over with the old iron. For those wondering, removing that title drops the margin to just 7% overall in favour of the 8700K. Then finally, at 1440p, the 8700K was just 4% faster on average, and removing older titles where Ryzen got served, such as CSGO and StarCraft 2, that only reduces the margin by a percent. Of course, we are mostly GPU limited at this resolution, but what it means is, in the here and now, there really is very little difference between these two CPUs for gamers.
We also see a 4% margin when comparing frame time performance, though I should point out the 8700K was slower in a handful of titles while performance was identical in five of them. Before wrapping things up, here's a few quick notes on the power consumption figures that I observed while testing. For the most part, the Ryzen 7 2700X system pulled between 380 and 410 watts from the wall. Again, that's when gaming, while the Core i7 8700K system drew between 420 and 444 watts. So that means that the Intel system did consume about seven to 10% more power, which isn't really that bad, given that it did deliver around 9% more performance on average at 1080p. Okay, so we've established that the 8700K is hands down faster than the 2700X when it comes to gaming. Uh, no real shocker there, but it has to be said that it's not a great deal faster. Realistically, at 1080p with a beastly graphics card, you're looking to gain up to, say, 15%. That would certainly be more of the high end, the typical high end, uh, but we often saw gains of 10% or less. So if you're after a no compromise gaming CPU, the 8700K is clearly it, and we amongst many others have said so quite a few times in the past. But what if you want a high-end CPU capable of strong gaming performance and want to save as much money as possible? In that situation, is one of these options better than the other? Well, in terms of pricing, they are very similar. In fact, you could say overall the system and even the platform costs are much the same. The AMD setup might save you $20, making it a few percent cheaper, and that cost shrinks to less than a percent for those building a high-end gaming rig worth around $2,000 US. If you're not doing any serious overclocking, then AMD will come out on top as the 2700X comes with a decent box cooler, while the 8700K comes with nothing, meaning you stand to save around $30 US on a basic tower style air cooler. But still, again, it's gonna save you very little on a high-end system. So what are the reasons why someone might be better off buying the Ryzen 7 2700X system? If you're not just purely gaming and you happen to run some core heavy applications from time to time, then the 2700X might be a better choice as it is better under core heavy workloads. Uh, but let's just stick to the strictly gaming narrative for the moment and you know throw in a bit of general usage, which the 8700K is better at. Uh, and that also means that we're not going to pretend that every second gamer is a streamer because let's be honest, they're not. That being the case, the 2700X, or rather the Ryzen platform, still has one advantage, and that is future support. AMD will continue to release new processors that support existing motherboards. Uh, even so, I'm not gonna pretend like this really matters at the high end, because I think it's fair to say, ultimately, it probably doesn't. It is true that X470 motherboards will support future CPU generations, while the Z370 boards are likely at the end of the road uh, with nowhere to go. Okay, so let's be realistic about this. If you're buying a Core i7 8700K or Ryzen 7 2700X today, when do you honestly imagine you'll be looking at upgrading that CPU and potentially the platform? In a year's time? I doubt a year, maybe two years at the earliest, but it's probably gonna be more like three. I think most of you would probably wait three years before upgrading a high-end system, but I could be wrong. But anyway, if it's three years, that you're going to be upgrading, then you're probably gonna to wanna to get a new motherboard anyway in that time. And given that you potentially only invested $150 US in 2018 on your motherboard, and that's based on my hypothetical uh, system costs that we just did, uh, saving that money on a future upgrade well, that would be nice. It's not really going to make a huge difference either. I remember we are talking about high-end systems here, and uh, not sort of the budget bangers where every last dollar counts. So I'll admit I'm a bit torn here on which way to go. They're both very appealing, so I guess it is somewhat of a high class problem. Uh, personally though, I don't feel that for gaming, and we're talking about exclusively gaming here, that the extra two cores of the 2700X is gonna get it ahead of the 8700K in the next few years. So the allure of that glorious five gigahertz overclock would probably suck me in. Again, a really tough choice here, but Purely for gaming, I'd get the Core i7-8700K. That being said though, let me know which CPU you choose and why. As always, I look forward to discussing this with you in the comment section below. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do at Harbour Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, you can get access to our Discord and chat to us at any time there. And we do a monthly live stream, which is a bit of fun, and we chat to all you guys in that. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. I am your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.